Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the YouTube channel that talks all things Wentworth. If you are new to the channel, then please hit that subscribe button right now for all future updates. Don't forget to stick around until the end of this video because I will be responding to some of your comments from my previous videos. Okay guys, how are we all doing? I hope you're all safe and well and doing good out there. How are you all feeling after Wentworth's end? I'm not gonna lie, it really has affected me. Like, I feel like I've been on a real downer since the season came to an end. I think normally at this stage, we would all be talking about what's to come next year in the next season, and it feels so strange as there are no more seasons to talk about. And I honestly have been on a bit of a downer these last couple of weeks. But it's all good, guys. I'm still here for you all, and I know you are all here for me too so let's keep the Wentworth memory alive and going and I wanted to take a look back at season 8 part 2 or season 9 whatever you want to call it season 8 part 2 or season 9 and let's talk about the things that I enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy and maybe a few things that I wish that had just been left out so let's jump in with the first episode, which I thought was a solid and brilliant start to the season. Now, a lot of scenes from the UK and Australian trailers did reveal quite a lot from episode 1, and there was this spoiler of Reb being killed off in the very first episode. Actually, I can remember when I found out about this spoiler in one of those German articles, and I can remember gasping when I read it. I actually sat in my chair and I was thinking to myself should I or shouldn't I put this in one of my YouTube videos I was really nervous about deciding what to do because if the German TV guide was true then this was a pretty big spoiler and even though I do talk about a lot of spoilers on this channel it's very rare that we get to find out about a death of a main character before an episode has aired so I thought to myself well I'm not going to be the only person who has seen this article and no doubt it's going to be all over social media at some point. So I took the decision to talk about this major spoiler in one of my videos earlier this year. But I wanted to make sure that I put a huge spoiler warning in the video just to give the viewers a chance to switch off if needed. I can actually remember sending Michelle a message warning telling her that there is going to be a huge death spoiler being released in my new video. But I told her that I will pull up a big exclamation mark on the video just before I reveal who the death is because I can remember Michelle did say that she didn't want to hear about big spoilers only small ones that you know you kind of see in trailers and so forth so I sent Michelle this warning message because as we all know Michelle loves Luke Kelly so I actually wasn't sure how Michelle was gonna take this news <laughs> I really wish I'd been a fly on the wall when she found out <laughs> but anyway I posted the video and I was waiting for everyone's responses and I can remember I was feeling really really nervous but uh, I can remember there was a lot of mixed responses some people were totally shocked about Reb's death and some people were really happy that Reb was gonna be killed off and there were a small minority of people who refused to believe the spoiler and basically just said that it was a load of garbage <laughs> but anyway Michelle did watch the spoiler but if I remember correctly, I'm sure she said in one of her videos that she actually paused my video when the exclamation mark came up, just to prepare herself for what she was about to hear. And then I'm sure Michelle did a reaction video, which of course was totally epic. And guys, make sure you go over and check out Michelle's YouTube channel, because she does a lot of Wentworth videos which are very entertaining, and I have got massive love and massive respect for Michelle so make sure you head over and have a look I will leave a link underneath this video so we all knew that Reb was going to die in the very first episode but we didn't know how 
So let's talk about Reb's death. I mean, did I enjoy it? Well, personally, not really. Not because it was bad, it's just the, the way it happened. It really, really shocked me. It hit a nerve for some reason. I was quite shocked that Sheila killed Reb in Lou's arms. I did think it was very heartbreaking and it got me thinking personally, if this had happened to me and it was Peter who was murdered in my arms by this crazy bitch, I, I literally probably would have done what Luke Kelly did. Kill Sheila. <laughs> but it did make me cry because I was invested in Lou and Reb's relationship. I know some people weren't bothered, but for me personally, I enjoyed their time on screen together. I do think it's a shame though that we didn't get Reb around for a little bit longer. I would have liked to have got to know Reb a lot more and maybe learn about his mum who couldn't accept his transition. I think if it wasn't the final ever season, then we could have got to know Reb a lot more. I actually think it's a real shame that we only got two final seasons. I mean, when Wentworth was renewed by Foxtel for two more final ever seasons, the Wentworth team, the directors, the writers, I don't know, somebody from the Wentworth team, they should have fought for three seasons, not two. The amount of stories that we had just in this final season alone was insane. I honestly feel like we didn't get enough time. I think Wentworth would have really benefited from for one extra final season or there should have been about 12 episodes for this final chapter and maybe even a couple of 90 minute episodes but saying that I did really love this final season but I also agree with a few comments that I've read that there wasn't enough time for us to get totally invested in certain storylines you can't do that in 10 final episodes there's just too many characters of this stage. And like I said, they should have either petitioned for one more final season, or they should have been 12 episode seasons. Now season 8 part 1 was supposed to be a building season for this year's final one. But in a way it was, but at the same time, what did season 8 part 1 actually do to prepare us for season 8 part 2? The only major storyline that did carry on in this final chapter was the storyline of Ari being stabbed in the shower block. To be honest, I felt that episode 1 and episode 2 of this year's season were the actual building blocks for the final chapter. Reb being killed off in episode 1 and then Sheila in episode 2 along with Lou declaring herself as top dog was the start of the final chapter in my opinion. If season 8 part 1 had been 12 episodes long, then this is how season 8 part 1 could have ended. It should have ended with with Reb being killed and then Lou getting her revenge on Sheila with Lou declaring herself as top dog in the final episode of season 8 part 1. How amazing would that have been? That would have been an epic ending. And then season 8 part 2 should have also have been 12 episodes and that would have been perfect to wrap up all the storylines that was needed. Now talking about Sheila, for me personally guys, it was a little bit disappointing. I can remember she was heavily promoted in season 8 part 1 last year, but she didn't turn up until episode 9, so I can remember thinking that Sheila must play a much bigger role in season 8 part 2, which of course she kind of did, but they killed her off in episode 2, what was the point? Now don't get me wrong guys, Sheila's death was absolutely epically disturbing, but it's a shame that it happened so early on in this season. I would have loved to have seen a big fight between Luke Kelly and Sheila. Maybe, I don't know, in the library or something. Actually guys, picture this. Lou and Sheila, they have a massive fight in the library and they both end up with like snooker sticks, you know, those snooker cues and they are like sword fighting with these sticks but Lou gets the upper hand and batters Sheila. Lou then gets the poison and throws it into Sheila's mouth and forces her to drink it. And then of course the poison would have killed Sheila, Mori would have come in and instead of using a mop to finish Sheila off, they could have used the snooker cue. Now that is just from the top of my head. 
Lou and Sheila definitely should have had a fight before Sheila was killed off in my opinion and I reckon this should have happened maybe in episode 4, episode 5. This could have been what we had if the season had maybe been a 12 episode rather than a 10. But let's talk about Lou Kelly declaring herself as top dog in the dining room. If you had watched my top 10 moments then you will know that this was my favourite moment from the whole season. I thought this scene was perfect. We have Lou kicking off and shouting at all the women that they did nothing. And I loved how the camera pans to each and every character's reactions. Even Joan's reaction was amazing. I even loved the bit when Linda's running out to go and get some help because she knows it's about to kick off. And to top it all off, they used that amazing piece of music that was used during the Siege episodes in Season 7. It was just perfect. And the episode, it left us on a pretty big cliffhanger of what the fuck just happened now just imagine if that was the final episode of season 8 part 1 it would have been outstanding also I do think that the scene where Lou is kicking off in the dining room I think it might be one of the last scenes that was filmed just before the covid lockdown happened in Australia now it's just a guess here but uh, after this episode every dining room scene was filmed slightly different and at a different angle I did notice that also I think this was the last time we had this many people together in an indoor scene so closely together after this episode you can sort of tell that they spaced out how many characters were together at any one time apart from any outdoor scenes that was filmed in the yard now talking of COVID I think the writers the directors and all the Wentworth team did a fantastic job despite the COVID restrictions even though I noticed a few things that might have been filmed slightly differently, it didn't affect the way I watched this final season. I did notice though that there were no scenes from outside the prison. For example, we didn't get any scenes of Vera at her house with baby Grace. In fact, if my memory serves me correctly, we only really saw Baby Grace once, which was filmed in the back of Vera's car. I think any scenes that were filmed outside the prison were actually filmed in cars. I mean, we have Jake in the car making up with Anne. We also had Anne in her car when she was having a mental breakdown. But apart from that, everything was in the prison itself. Now, I've been reading and watching quite a lot of interviews over the last few weeks with de various cast members and it has been revealed that quite a few storylines had to be changed due to COVID, including the final episode. The one that we all know that was changed was Vera trying to poison Joan. The original plan was for that scene to be filmed at Vera's house and Jake was supposed to arrive unannounced and he was then going to use that poison milk for baby Grace. But of course they couldn't film any outdoor scenes and they couldn't film any scenes with a real baby so that idea was scrapped. But I am left wondering though, what else was changed? I definitely think that Joan's storyline might have been changed. I don't think her trial was supposed to happen in episode 9 because Joan's trial was mentioned in early episodes that her trial was coming up soon. This was like in episode 1 and episode 2 but after that we didn't hear much more about Joan's trial until much later on. So I feel that Joan's trial was supposed to originally happen much early on and I reckon Joan was probably going to be set free and she was going to go after Will, Vera and Jake on the outside but of course due to covid these scenes couldn't happen so in my opinion i reckon jones storyline definitely changed but we got what we got guys and to be fair i still love this season but there is always that little thing in the back of my mind wishing that we had got the original script it makes me feel a little bit sad that we're never going to know what that original script was and it's such a shame that went with producers they didn't try and get maybe one more season scheduled after season 8 part 2 because of COVID getting in the way. It would have been the perfect excuse to try and get one more season. Anyway, let's talk about Eve Wilder. Now, I absolutely loved Eve and I loved her twisted storyline with Joe. but was this storyline really needed for these 
final 10 episodes. I mean, what did this storyline even achieve? I mean, I honestly thought the writers brought in Eve Wilder to bring out the real Joan Ferguson, which of course, that's exactly what happened. But after the crazy episode of Eve losing an eyeball, that was pretty much the end of it. Joan wanted Jake to be killed, but nothing came of this after Eve left. Why didn't Joan just kill Jake herself in the end? I mean, she wanted to kill the monster that she once created, so what changed her mind? In my opinion, Eve was brought in for one purpose and one purpose only, to lose an eyeball. <laughs> the writers wanted to bring evil Joan back, and they wanted to recreate a similar scene of what happened to Juicy Lou and that was pretty much it. Now as entertaining and shocking as it was, I personally feel we could have done without Eve's character. I mean, if this wasn't Wentworth's ever final season, then yes, I can totally understand why they brought in Eve Wilder, but seeing as we only had 10 final episodes, I personally would have preferred to have seen more of the current storylines taken centre stage. I mean, if Joan had continued to be Evil Joan after the Eve eyeball episode then I would have been totally cool with her appearance because it would have served a purpose for bringing evil Joan out to get her full revenge on Will, Vera and Jake but that's not what happened but saying that though guys the moment where Eve tried to lock Joan in the freezer but then Joan overpowers her and comes crawling out like a demented demon was a fabulous moment for the show I did absolutely love it now talking of Joan one thing that I am slightly gutted about out from this final season is Joan versus Will. This is a showdown that should have happened. I mean, from the very beginning, Joan has had it in for Will after that whole Gianna storyline. Not only that, but since then, Will buried Joan alive. So this should have been some sort of epic showdown with these two. Now, I'm not talking about an actual fight. I mean, there were so many things the writers could have done. Joan could have, I don't know, hit Will over the head, knocking him out, and then ties him to a chair. And then she could have given him a good grilling about the mess history. It would have been fantastic and we could have had some flashback scenes. I just think it would have been so good for these two amazing characters to have some sort of climatic showdown in some shape or form, but unfortunately we got nothing. Now, I don't know whether if the writers did have something planned, but maybe they had to change it due to COVID, I don't know. But either way, it is just a shame. But not only that, but in my opinion, Joan and Will's storyline is not finished. Just because because Joan saved Vera and carried her outside doesn't mean that Joan is walking off into the night as Cinderella. In the final episode, Will told Joan that he was going to have her sent to the mental asylum, so there's no way Joan is just gonna walk off and start a new life. She's gonna be dealing with Will and Dr. Miller. If there is a spin-off show later on down the line, I'd love to see what happened next with Joan Ferguson. Now, the one person who was making my blood boil throughout the whole season was Judy Bryant, the bitch. Now, the writers did a good job of making us all hate Judy after what she did to Ali. Now, I loved the episode where the women find out about Judy, and Judy takes a good beating from Boomer, and then almost drowns in the dirty bin filled with water. That was such a fantastic episode, and it was so satisfying. But then, of course, we were left with Judy working with Lou for the rest of the season with this bomb plot. Now, Judy was a little bit more quieter in a couple of episodes because she was pretty much just hiding behind Lou most of the time. But it wasn't long before Judy was nagging Lou over and over again about wanting to talk to Fraser and this, that and the other. Now, I don't know what Lou's plan was for Judy in the end. I mean, I always assumed that Lou was hoping that the blast would kill Judy, which of course it did. But I was secretly hoping that Lou or even Ali would have killed Judy in the bomb aftermath. Because I was a little bit disappointed in Judy's death. I mean, the writers built up this character over two seasons for us all to hate, only to have a very unsatisfying death. I mean, I did cheer when Vera found Judy's dead body, but there's also a part of me thinking, oh, was that it? Didn't we actually get to see her physically die? I mean, she's been one of the biggest baddies Wentworth has had in the last couple of years. 
I mean, for me personally, it would have been better if maybe if Judy was very badly injured on the floor after the blast. And let's say Anne Reynolds finds Judy on the floor covered in blood. And let's just say Judy is impaled by a metal bar or something or impaled by a gate. And then uses this opportunity to grab some rubble or picks up a brick and then slams it down onto Judy's head, only for Vera to walk in and catch Anne doing the deed. Now that would have been brilliant, and that would have also made more sense for Anne to then attack Vera rather than that I let the bomb in scenario that we got. I think for me that would have been a lot better. Now let's talk about Kate Jenkinson who plays Ali. I thought she did a fantastic job this year. In fact, I think this might be one of my favourite Ali seasons. Aside from season 4 with Ali and B, this is up there. This season was up there with Ali. I loved Ali's journey. I mean, it was heartbreaking, but it was such an important story to tell, and the writers got it so right. I was really happy as well that Ali took centre stage throughout the season and wasn't just pushed out of the major storylines. I think the oh my god moment for me was when Ali stabbed herself in the legs. I just really wasn't expecting it at all and it made me cry. But a little bit later on in the same episode, I was even more gobsmacked when she kissed Dr. Miller. If someone had predicted that Ali and Dr. Miller were going to share a kiss, I would have laughed in their face, but we got it anyway. Speaking of Dr. Miller, as annoying as his character was this year, he was looking fit. I'm not gonna lie guys, I was happy to see this storyline continue just so that I could have some Dr. Miller screen time. <laughs> it's a shame that his character was just sacked just before the final episode. I think it would have been a much more memorable ending if Dr. Miller had been killed in the explosion. He could have come back to the prison because maybe he'd forgotten some paperwork or something just as the bomb goes off. In fact, how good would it have been if some of the women were having visits at the time of the explosion. Maybe Frankie Doyle could have come to see Boomer to hear the pregnancy news as the bomb goes off. I mean, don't panic guys, I wouldn't want Frankie to die, but it would have been a nice treat for us to see Frankie in the final episode with a big storyline unfolding, and maybe she could have just helped Boomer get to safety, just as a little bonus for the fans. Speaking of Boomer, I'm really happy that she finally did get pregnant, I really, really am. It's just such a shame that it was all done in such a sleazy way. I mean, it is typical Boomer, which is why I think the writers went with this storyline, but with me being the old romantic that I am, I would have preferred Boomer to actually find a nice, decent guy to get pregnant with. A little bit like the Nash and Doreen storyline, but hey ho, at least Boomer is happy. The only disappointing thing is that we don't get to see Boomer live out her pregnancy storyline. This just brings me back though, that we should have had one more more season. They could have easily done one more season to tie up all the loose ends and delve more into people's backstories. I mean, look at Lou Kelly. What a fantastic addition to the show. However, I want to learn more about her. Why is she the way she is? I would have liked to have seen her have more visits, maybe with her brother, who we met once in Season 8 Part 1, and just had a bit more of a backstory before Lou met Reb. I mean, if they did manage to squeeze one more more season from Foxtel, Vera could have brought back Bridget. I mean, picture this guys, Vera would have gone to Bridget saying, look Bridget, Wentworth is in one hell of a mess after the explosion. The women's mental health is suffering. Some of them have got some serious PTSD and we have one inmate, Lou Kelly, who seriously needs to chat with someone. Perfect chance then guys to bring back Bridget. I mean, if we did have one more final season, I can imagine Lou would blame the whole bomb scenario on Judy Bryant and she would try and wriggle her way out of it and she'll say that she didn't know the bomb was going to be that big and I mean Lou's future it would be up in the air let's just say the minister comes down and he wants to know what Lou's state of mind is maybe he wants to get a sent to the mental institute as well maybe Bridget comes in and she's trying to assess Lou Kelly with a few sessions how intense would these scenes be it would be outstanding also so I personally think that the threat of being locked away in an asylum could be 
something that would terrify Lou Kelly after everything that she went through with Reb in that awful place. It could just be the ticket to delve inside the real Lou Kelly. Oh, what a shame we never got this, guys. Not only that, but if Bridget was brought back to help sort out the mess of Wentworth, then it would be the perfect opportunity to bring Frankie back, who is now a qualified solicitor, and she could come in and help Annie with an appeal to be released out of Wentworth on compassionate grounds. There's just so many amazing opportunities we could have had if we got one more, just one more final season. Now let's talk about Rita Connors because Rita is one of my favourite characters since B-Smith. However, I am very disappointed about the Detective Jonesy storyline. Now, I did read a few of your comments saying how it seemed to drag on and it didn't really go anywhere. And guys, I am with you on that. That storyline didn't need to last for most of this season. It should have been running for maybe around one or two episodes at the most. I also feel that Rita should have been outed as a copper much earlier on in the season, way before episode 8. It didn't give enough time for Rita to blossom in my opinion. Rita should have been Wentworth's final ever top dog, with the women chanting top dog, top dog. A little bit like the scene where the women were doing it for Joan in season 5. But it was all left up in the air in the final episode, which again is such a shame. Now I think I said this in one of my previous videos, but Rita, she was trying to get that mobile phone off Lou Kelly for the recordings with Jonesy. However, Lou discovered this, that Rita was after the phone in episode 9. This is why Mari ended up being killed off, but surely by the end of episode 9, Lou would have just deleted the recording. Because Lou, she'd already played it to the women in the yard, so what use was that recording? now. So I reckon even though Ali managed to get that phone right at the end of the final episode, I reckon in a final brutal twist, Lou Kelly deleted that recording. It's kind of a fan fiction that I've made up in my own mind. <laughs> but let's move on to Ruby Mitchell because I really do enjoy her character. She really grew on me in season 8 part 1 and I was totally invested with her this year because of the way she was so good to Boomer. I was convinced that Ruby would be killed off this year in order to unleash Rita, but it never happened. I did, however, really enjoy Ruby and Zayna's relationship. I think they both looked really good together, and they were so adorable when they had some screen time. Jake Stewart, right there. I'm just going to put it out there right now. I think Jake should have been killed off this year. I think it should have happened in the episode where Eve lost her eyeball. I just didn't see the point in his character after this episode. He didn't really play any big part after Eve was sent to the mental home. So this is what I think should have happened. So you know the scene where Vera finds Jake tied up in the bin area? Well, I reckon Jake should have had more of a serious head injury and I reckon Vera should have just like gone up to him, seen blood running out of his head. Vera then unties him and she's like calling for help in a little bit of a panic. Jake then looks up at Vera and says that he's sorry and that he loves her before taking his final breath and dies in Vera's arms. Vera's then cradling him and she's crying uncontrollably and she actually blurts out she loves him too. Now for me that would have been the perfect tragic ending in for Jake's character. I mean, I would have cried my eyes out, but it would have been brilliant and a lot more memorable in my opinion. Also, it would have set Vera off in a mission against Ferguson because that's what Vera spent most of her time doing this season, blaming Joan for everything. And it would have made that scene where Joan saves Vera a bit more tender in my opinion. I mean, Vera would have then realised that it wasn't Joan who killed Grace's father. Just that little added little bit would have been... Oh, Oh, amazing for me. Just a little bit of a missed opportunity in my opinion. Linda Miles, well, oh god. For me personally, they ruined Linda's character. I mean, in the final episode, she seemed to be a lot more, what's the word? Empathy. She had a lot more empathy, but it was just like in the last final few moments. It was too little, too late. So I'm really, really sad about Linda Miles' character. But, all in all, it was a fantastic final season. I mean, we can all say in high Hindsight, oh, I would have done this differently. Oh, I would have preferred Joan to snap everyone's necks. <laughs> but we got what we got under COVID restrictions, which is still such an achievement. For me, I just wish we had got three final seasons rather than the two. 
there were way too many loose ends not tied up in that final episode and this makes me think that the writers must have done it on purpose just in case it ever did get recommissioned in the future. Never say never. Oh dear, all this talk about one more season has had me thinking about doing a fan fiction season on this channel. I have caught myself daydreaming about some amazing storylines that could have happened next. And it's got me thinking that I should really start writing these things down and creating a fan fiction season on this channel. Let me know guys, let me know in the comments box below if you would like me to create another season of Wentworth on this channel of what happened next. And if I do get a lot of interest then I shall oblige and I shall do it for you all. Honestly guys, I've had some proper deep daydreams about what happened next for our favourite characters and I've even shocked myself at how dark my imagination can get sometimes. So let me know guys, if this is something you'd be interested in me doing then let me know. Anyway guys, that's my thoughts on season 8 part 2 or season 9, whatever you want to call it. I loved every minute of it but I just wish we had a little bit more. What are your thoughts on Season 8 Part 2 as a whole? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments box below. Right then, on that note guys, it's now time for some comment replies. So we have Mixed AMVS. Wentworth was such an amazing series, was a little gutted by the last season, was expecting more from Ferguson being alive, a bit weird that she turned into a good person, was expecting more from Kelly and wanted to see more of her being top dog but we didn't really see much. Oh, I, I'm totally with you, I, I've kind of explained the similar situation in this video, like I love the season but I get you, something was missing, we needed more and I think the biggest problem of all, there wasn't enough episodes. There wasn't enough time, there was way too much going on. Which is why I feel Season 8 Part 1 and Season 8 Part 2 should have been 12 episodes per season or they should have had 3 final seasons, 1 final season to go. But like I said, we got what we got and I totally agree with you. Thank you for your comment. And we got Short Boy. It's the final episode of Wentworth since there isn't a prison anymore, but the continuation spin-off series Barnhurst, hmm, I do like that idea. In fact, they could have actually done a spin-off season where they were being held at Barnhurst for say three months while Wentworth is being rebuilt. That could have been a whole spin-off season. And then after that spin-off season, Wentworth's been rebuilt and then we go back to Wentworth. So Wentworth kind of takes a year out, but it doesn't if you get me. I kind of like that idea. You should send that to the writers. You send it to Fremantle and Fox Sun and see what they think. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Hannah Jackson, make a fan fiction for season 10, then you can keep making new YouTube videos about it. Well, Hannah, <laughs> I actually screenshotted this comment after scripting this video, so I'm glad that you're all for me doing some sort of fan fiction entry. As long as I get a lot of people interested, then I'll be happy to oblige. Thank you for your comment. And we have Todd Beaton. They can't make any more episodes because in Australia, after 100 episodes, they don't get any more money for Australia government to help them. That's why Wentworth ended. Oh, I'm not going to pretend to know all the ins and outs about the Australian government thing. Somebody was telling me because it's being aired on Foxtel, which is a pay TV subscription service in Australia, that's why it's ran out of Australian funding. So I've always said it would be great if um, a company like Netflix or Amazon Prime or even Sky bought the rights to Wentworth. That way they wouldn't need the Australia funding. I don't know. So that's, that's just kind of what I've got in my head. But then again, Again, I can't see Foxtel ever selling the rights to Wentworth, so we're kind of stuck in a rut at the moment, aren't we? But anyway, Todd, thank you for your comments, and uh, thank you all for your comments. As usual, you guys never let me down. So keep those comments coming, and let's keep the Wentworth memory alive. Right then, guys, that's all I have for you today. I will be back very soon with a very special video that I think you're all going to love. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button because you will not want to miss it, because because it's going to be a video that a lot of you have been requesting for quite some time, so you will not want to miss it. Okay guys, well, thank you all for watching, stay safe out there, and I will see you all again very soon.